First of all, I want to say hello to the filmmakers, the artists, Rui Victoria Chefetz and Zohar Melanie Kezra. Hello. Hello. Ah, oh, nice. Now I see you. Um, so thank you. And uh, Asaf, that is the producer of the movie and the producer of the film festival. So, <laughs> so and all the, ca the cast is over here. And um, I want to, I, I, will, I will have uh, questions for both of you, uh, mostly Roy and Zohar, okay? And, but if someone want to talk, Feel free. We okay. are now uh, in a family event. <laughs> <laughs> gathering, gathering, yes. So it's a question for both of you, uh, Zohar and uh, Roy. Uh, how did you get uh, to know each other? And uh, when did you decide to embrace this uh, journey? And it's this creative journey um, and making a movie together. So you who wanna, want to be the first? Do you want to be first? You can, you can start. I can. Um, okay, so um, in 2017, I think, uh, I showed uh, the older TV series we did, a uh, documentary series in the Berlin uh, Museum, uh, Jewish Museum. And uh, we had a few talks there and uh, Roy Victoria was, uh, was there when we met and uh, she saw the, the series and she told us that she really, really felt it and she really connected and she really liked it. And then we just kept in touch a little bit and she contacted me maybe a few months after or half a year after uh, to start the project together and something like uh, in, in the beginning, an idea for a video uh, artistic project and then something like a documentary. And it just kind of really automatically naturally uh, developed into uh, a film, you know, a, an, an artistic film. Uh, uh, um, mm, oh. uh, yeah, so as Zoha said, I mean, actually from my side, it's a little bit different because because I, while I was starting transition, uh, I I felt I you know as a trans person you look for narratives, and I guess in 2013, 2014, felt that the narrative was very um, conservative, very uh, very narrow in a way. For most of what I've seen in YouTube, so people were mostly speaking about you know, the classical way, if you can say, about, you know, redemption uh, from black and white. And when I watched Zohar's uh, An Affect, uh, like mini series or uh, nine chapters uh, about the transgender community in Israel, the way they did it, I was, yeah, I was really touched and really, it really in a way saved me, I think, like, because it's opened my, my heart and open my mind and to feel there is you know there are other narratives and also there's another way to deal with a subject and it was very um so then yeah then I think I wrote you or something like that you know in Facebook or something and then when you came to Berlin to the Jewish Museum event then we uh we spoke a little bit and then when I got the uh, Anne and Ari Rosenfeld Prize, uh, two amazing collectors from LA. So the idea was to create something different from what I'm doing usually, which is painting, drawing. And so then I approached, I think, to get the advice of Zohar. <laughs> but then I was like, we are speaking and we are speaking the same and we think, we think the same. So why not doing it something together? And then we did a documentary who, uh, of nine minutes of Block of Clay that was in the Venice Biennale. And then as Zoe said, it was natural. It just felt like very different from the film industry. We work differently. I, that's why I always was skeptical if Zoe 
you know, will continue or not because it's different the way he works usually because it was like the way I work in the studio. It's like step by step, you know, and with a lot of intuitions, a lot of love without so much money. Uh, but, you know, also, yeah, we didn't write like a script and, and then we start, you know, looking for actors or something. We just, there was like a very intense dialogue between us mostly, so, yeah. So, yeah, you, you a little bit answered about my second question, uh, okay. but I want to know, did you add a, a script or did you add ideas and develop them in uh, improvisation or after talking about them? Uh, or you just really had a, a serious script and worked on it, based on it? Um, we had um, a kind of somewhat of a script that was not fully heavily uh, worked uh, on between me and Way Victoria before uh, meeting the actors. So we had ideas for scenes. And because there was no dialogue, there was no breakdown of dialogue. So we kind of had the points of actions and kind of like an emotional uh, development, what we wanted to happen as an emotional development of the main character with each scene. And we knew that he needs to be with a family, with, with a man that she meets for, for a fling. And we knew that she's going through some kind of like a psychological and kind of a conscious a of consciousness in and out of her consciousness uh, journey. But when we uh, met the actors and it was first with Matthias, we kind of uh, worked on it together. And, you know, it was kind of like the hands of faith to, to see what's going to happen. And with a lot of faith too, um, that we're finding the, the right actors to work in this type of manner and that would really bring 100% of themselves. And they are also part of the script because uh, they were all working on it together with um, the first scene of Susanne, the, the mother. Uh, we, we, told her, we told her we want her to do a theater piece, for example, and she chose the piece, you know? So we, we kind of counted on the people that we worked with that they know best what would uh, be the best way for them to express themselves in a very uh, authentic and natural way without us really kind of like over directing them and putting words in their mouth. It was really, really, really a collaborative uh, experience. But prior we had a, we had a, a script that was not um, uh, fully, fully developed before the characters came in. Like oh, an outline, oh, an outline of, ideas. of ideas. Yeah, actions too. Oh. So, Roy, do you want to have, add something? Or oh, Matthias, how was it uh, for you? Yeah, actually, it's I just, maybe it's, it's actually also related to Matthias because I think the way we worked with Matthias, which was the first, uh, you know, the heart of the, of the film at the beginning or um we knew what kind of scene we want i we knew that we want to uh express um this kind of event that you can see at the movie and when i met matthias we spoke about it and we uh, you know went into it I, I he brought a lot of uh you know his perspective um his emotions, uh, and um, in a way, if Mo, Mo, um, Moi said about uh, the drawing, so I feel like it was like to 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 to, to draw the contour of the of the of the figure, and then to go deeper into the layers, and the layers like were building with the other actors and actresses and um yeah and maybe it's 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 a it's a good moment to to see matthias perspective about it because he was very uh i think crucial uh part uh from the i think from one of the most important scenes in the, in this uh film 
Yeah, um, I mean, we met the first time and it was it was very different because I'm like the classical trained kind of actor, you know, who sometimes uh, gets invitations to a casting studio and stuff like that. And then casting agents uh, check out whether you're right for the part or not. This time was different because it was from the beginning, it was a very personal thing. It, it, it is a special project. It is a deeply personal story, a very personal kind of storytelling. So um, it was first thing was to build up trust, I guess, like sounds cliche, but it's but it's true, like um, check if, if we get along. Um, uh, Roe Victoria shared a lot of uh, very personal experiences and uh, but she also she's of course she's not the classically trained actress so of course she comes from a very she brings herself into the into the movie i me of course i'm more the the actor you know who, who builds up more like a character you know and i would never do such things as i do in that <laughs> scene never i would never treat a lady like this um so but she also let me let me do my work you know as an actor build up a character and it's right we didn't have a script we knew about the intensity we wanted to achieve i would say but it was in the end up to me or up to us how we didn't know how much violence or what kind of violence would come up or and that makes the scene pretty special to me, for example, because it's not only about violence, there are also some moments of deep affection, I would say, and also of tenderness, which makes it crucial. And yes, I remember us having a couple of lines like improvising, but they were all edited out. And I, I, I um, agree with that, you know, because it was more about the danger underneath and that danger is kind of speechless so we developed our chemistry and then we were in the moment together and then Zoa chased us with, with his camera you know yeah I think it's three of us um yeah you definitely said it very accurate like we were in the moment it it it's really I know it's a cliche but it was kind of magic I mean we did it in one evening uh, we didn't, I mean, we trusted each other, of course, but, you know, you can trust each other and you can, you know, like really uh, that it will not work out. And then it's, uh, it, it happened uh, of yeah. three of us and one house, we did just three of us. So Zoa was at the same time that he is the director and I'm the director, creator, as Zoa also was the cameraman yeah. and me and Matthias, we were playing or um, so yeah it's I can just say it was very special and yeah. very yeah very you know we were lucky in, in, in so many ways yeah yeah and we did it we did it like twice I remember I mean it's yeah. almost two years ago now <laughs> that we yeah. did it but we did it twice the entire scene from like entering the apartment until she she leaves you know the entire thing twice and that was that was it you can imagine it was quite uh, which is not such a long time it's like 20 30 minutes but intense, but intense. if you have huh? what did you I say i think you hear your echo or something yeah, yeah i thought the zoa stopped something um yeah so, but that that was about that was about it. But it was a very it was um, a deeply. I found it. I found it very different from what I usually do. And uh, it was it was uh, of course also weird, you know, because they entered my my because we shot it here in my <laughs> apartment, you know, due to an emergency. And the road entered my apartment and like hours later they were gone again you know and I knew that something very intense and special had happened you know but it was it was over
Yes, and um, it's happened a lot in very independent movies. I can tell, I, I, I'm a proof of it. <laughs> because my movies are, we shot at homes and including our own. So when you don't have the budget, <laughs> so you shoot at home. <laughs> um, uh, Zohar, uh, the film described Victoria journey, but um, what uh, personal journey you you taking from this uh, uh, creative uh, creation that you did together? Because you know it's Victoria. Uh, I think it's 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 the story or not the story of Victoria, a personal emotion that described on the screen uh, and you are translated them into, into a film, into a, into a picture. So what you take from it? Do you understand my question? <laughs> I, I, I feel it's, it's kind of general, so I can take it to def very different places. I feel like um, it's, um, it's a very gentle um, kind of art, art piece, and it's uh, almost like a dance in, in ways, and it's almost like, uh, as, as you said, a painting, and um, it's kind of very silent and very sensitive, and and I feel like it's almost like a kind of like a walk in through the the subconscious of a, of a character. And I really like um, I really like films uh, like uh, the Double Life of uh, Veronique and um, and films that are more kind of like poetic. And they are they have a very kind of spiritual um, uh, essence to them that they're not telling the audience too much, but they, they allow you to go really, really deep into the, the personal uh, path of the, of the main character. And, and I felt like, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's me also, and, and each character is kind of like a mirror reflection of, of the main character and they all go through something that uh, is, is similar. They all look for kind of like strive for a release from their physical state and from their body and from their, the darkness that they're in. And I felt like it's something that is, is so uh, vast and it's so much bigger than a, a story about this one person. It's, it's kind of like, a, it's, a, it's a big emotion and it's a very human and it's, I, I really like um, films that, um, that try to, to kind of like reflect on, on the world, reflect on reality and go in and out of realism and surrealism, realism and surrealism. And, you know, because it was such a intimate project, we were kind of like working on it, um, for, for a while talking about it and really bringing 100% uh, our, our creative selves into it. And I feel, you know, I don't, I don't really divorce myself from anything in, in this movie. It's all really a part of my body cells. And, uh, and you know, I, it's, it's, it's very moving. And when I watch it, I really, I'm really touched by it. And I think it's, a, it's such a brave, brave um, expression, you know, regardless of a film, it's just a really brave expression of, um, of, of humanity or, and the human condition. And so I can talk from like the cinematography perspective or from the editing perspective or directing perspective, but it all, it's all the same to me uh, because I, I, I really worked with my heart and there was no really working with the brain too much here. It was kind of really what the heart is telling you that uh, is, uh, is right. And, and really working in collaboration with every, everyone, really each character, each scene of, of Maurice and Matthias and Susanna, it's really like them, you know, it's, it's really what they brought uh, as much as what Roy Victoria brought. And so, so it's really like a collaboration. I, I really feel like um, it's a collaboration of all the actors as, as creators too. And I think it's, 
it's really it's really great as well to see as um as a final piece yeah i think um if i can add something yes <laughs> uh, so you know i i just for example when when we uh when we were shooting the the scene of me and matthias um I I was confused in some moment because um, in a classical way of of of, of defining it or on on, on um, see it it's it's the way that I am a, a submissive uh, woman uh, the passive in the situation and uh, very exposed and vulnerable. Um, towards this uh, violence and I think when at the, at the last part of the scene when when me and Matthias or me hugging Matthias uh, after uh, this in a way uh, escalation uh, violent escalation uh, I think in that moment it feels like there is a kind of uh, a duet between us that made me to be for a moment uh, outside of my body in a way and to think again who is really um, um, who needs whom and also what is exactly the idea of you know of being so much exposed and giving yourself so much uh, into this um in this violence uh, situation, in the sense of uh, being dominated by by someone else, and uh, which leads us lead, lead us to another aspect, which you know, the main critique that I get from the movie is that I'm very that I'm very passive in this movie, and I even got um, um, yeah, like uh, like someone like made it very, very clear that he feels like it's, uh, that I, I'm, I'm not really doing a great uh, promotion or greater uh, uh, um, exposure to the trans community by it. And I think, you know, I think first it's, it, it, it asks questions about, uh, first about what does it mean? You know, what does it mean when we say that it's, it's violent? And what does it mean for the person itself and the body itself that he wants to be exposed into violence? And, and, you know, mostly that it's not just about being a trans woman. Um, and I think this is like related to what Zor said that I think it's mostly about, um, you know, about the body, about being lonely, about being vulnerable about um, being passive in this world. That it's something that automatically uh, people react very aggressively towards. Like you cannot choose to be passive. Um, and um, yeah, so I think I always giving the example that when you go into SNM, Sadomaso, uh, to the, 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 the BDSM world, uh, one of the first question when a, a dom, a dominant uh, person asks you as a submissive is what are your restrictions? What are your limits? So you need to define your limits. Um, and this is something that I think very, very crucial maybe for this, um, to understand a little bit about, about the movie even that you know, to ask ourselves who is actually, you know, the dominant and what is it that we are so, um, you know, we are so conservative in, our, in the way we see it uh, also. But maybe it's, yeah, it's, it's something else, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, when you told me, I was surprised that people will say something about um, that the movie is not uh, presenting... Uh, in a good way, trans people, because when I watched the movie, I didn't thought that the movie is supposed to be a commercial or a 
educational or didactic movie about what is trans or you know it's not this kind of a movie so you know there is movies you know the the regular movies most of them you know commercial one for straight people for you know <laughs> to know what is a trans so you know stuff like this um, and there is enough of them so why trans people can do out and uh, express their own private feelings and uh, you know our any arti artist have his own a uh, desire and all his own motions and thoughts and why not to show them on the screen even if they are not you know the the mainstream or what we want to present you know so yeah i think i mean we cannot be naive that you know we are um in a very crucial moment also in the trans narrative in mainstream because, and we definitely knew it yeah, when we did it. So I, I mean, in one hand, I totally agree with you. The movie was not about educating, not about a uh, representation of the trans community. Uh, just at the same time, you know, I, uh, I understand why as a trans person or as a gay person or as a, you know, um, a straight person, you always project yourself into the character. And definitely the trans community is still in a very uh, fragile uh, moment or still in a very fragile moment that every representation that we have for a trans person, trans person. and who deal a little bit with, uh, you know, with his body or with his gender and definitely it's part of the movie. So it's definitely something that is in the back of our mind. So, so I totally, we felt the freedom, you know, we didn't feel that we are just talking about it. The, my narrative at all, by the way. So it was not about my narrative at all. Um, and it's definitely not about me uh, telling the story of a transgender woman or or my story as a transgender woman, yeah. Yes, okay. So, Victoria, was it easy for you to share, uh, to, do, to do this uh, movie? Like, it, because it's your first time you're dealing, trying to create a feature film. So it's a very different from, you know, making your huge, beautiful uh, paintings that, you know, it's it's a different creativity. So how was it for you to do something totally different from what you doing usually? You you understand what I? Yeah, definitely. So yeah, uh, so it was not easy. Definitely, it's still not easy um, because as I am. Uh, so because it's very. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's very uh, uh, private here, so we don't have a lot of uh, uh, like uh, audience here. So most of the people, or at least half of the people here, know know me. Uh, so I'm very total. I'm I'm really into any kind of process artistically, uh, and also in the drawings. I'm exposed and being exposed and 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 share my vulnerability but in the studio. And then the process of being a visual artist as a painter, you have this, uh, you know, dance, violence dance in the studio with yourself and with the drawings and with the paintings and with the papers. And then you show the result um, yes. and it's still hard. And here in this kind of process, I don't know about other films because I never did any other film. Um, it was, First, it was the idea that um, to bring, you know, my vulnerability and to share it with other people. So first to collaborate with other creator, which is never easy. And then uh, to share it with the actors and then to be in the moment and at the same time think as the director or at least from outside of myself and, and nevertheless being, uh, you know, telling my story or at least 
telling the story of my body and above all is to be naked you know to be not just nude uh, just to be naked emotionally psychologically naked um yeah so yeah it's so many so many layers that it's definitely not easy it's not easy for me even to watch it i i mean Zor and Asaf know it. I speak about it. It's it's every time it's it's a very um, demanding for me in a good way. Uh, but yeah, but it's not I cannot say that it's something that is very um, you know very easy. It's something very different, very different. It is uh, I think I still don't understand the um, the complete meaning and the complete, um, yeah, complete, um, <laughs> um, I think it's, it's in process in a way. I'm still trying to, uh, to understand with myself uh, what really happened there even, uh, yes. so. So it will take time to, till you will do another movie. <laughs> you never know, yeah. <laughs> um, what was the most, uh, I guess it's, it's an obvious question, but what was the most mentally complex thing for you? question, but what was the most mentally complex thing for you? For you to, to shoot, You mean for me? Yes, and Zoa too. Uh, I think I said the... Yes. I think it's very interesting because, you know, at the beginning when I want to answer to these questions, I think about the moment that I was with Matthias and the moment where I was with, uh, with myself between after the mother scene and then you see me in front of the mirror. But I think the most complex and difficult <laughs> moment was actually for me now, and also there I felt it is, was in the last scene, to be on the train uh, or next to the train, uh, on the, like standing on the platform and you know to reflect and to think about all all the movie in a way and, and, and my narrative, the narrative of the Victoria of the movie and to stand there and to, um, to try to, to connect between all those pieces and to react to it. So for me, I think the last scene was the most uh, demanding uh, emotionally. Yeah. Should I, I use want- all? Before Zor, I want to say something. When I saw the movie for the first time, I felt that the, this scene is maybe the most optimistic in the movie. Because you put everything behind you and you're starting a new, you know, you, you, you're starting something new. You, it's, a, it's a new day. It's something, it, it, I felt very, you know, the, the movie is very, very heavy. And suddenly I thought, okay, there is a new day now and she could start from beginning. I don't know, this is something that was running in, in my mind and I felt, um, I felt, you know, after this very, very demanding movie, very, it's relaxed me a little bit, this end. But this is uh, mine. I needed to put this because you talked about this scene. Um, uh, Roy, uh, Zohar, uh, <laughs> what was the most uh, demanding scene for you to shoot? I think the the Susanna. That there was, a, but it wasn't demanding emotionally. Technically, you know, it's, it's not the same. Uh, the same perspective uh, so it was um, 
just thinking of how to make it interesting. So like there's the theater piece and one audience member and how to make it cinematic and kind of like how to communicate as a cinematographer with her in a way that won't be like too theatrical and too much like she's playing a role and, and how to make them connect with each other without any, any real connection between them. Um, but, it, but it was also one of the funnest um, scenes. And also in, in, in with Mois because the apartment was so, so, so small and you can hear everything. And the, we, we had like technical stuff, you know, but I, I would love to hear maybe um, Mois and Matthias about it. If, if there's um, like their experience, you know. So let's, Mois, Mois, can you say a few words about your experience as an actor in the movie, the scene. It's a very yes, personal true. scene, very intimate. Yes, there are two different uh, perspectives, of course, because uh, watching the movie now, that was the first time, actually. I, I think every everyone else watched it already a while ago, but for me, it was the first time. Uh, and, uh, of course, I felt... Uh, that it was uh, quite heavy, very, a lot of exposition, you know, of the body, of yourself. It's very, I try to find the word intrusive. There's a word like this. I mean, you see yeah. yourself actually. And it's a journey for uh, Victoria, for Rui. As I said in the beginning, it's, I connected with the, the paintings all of a sudden, no, but I still have to process, like uh, she said, the movie. And uh, also I felt that uh, what uh, was very interesting in this directing by Zohar and Roy, that every character is not a uh, flat. The, the, you see the, um, the interactivity between Rui and the other, but you also see, you know, the, 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 the scars, but not only physically, not only visually. You see the, uh, what's going on on the other one, the head, mind, soul. Like with Matthias, for instance, you don't see only what's about this problem of violence or domination etc but you see his pain you know and uh, we we did a lot of things of uh, with the uh, Zohar and I was surprised that many things were cut but I understand that there's a purpose final purpose of the movie that many things must be like a diamond must be you know but as an actor doing now changing to the Situation that was very pleasant to work. Uh, it was very uh, intensive. Yes, we we did it in three days or something like that. Yes, if I don't, if I'm not wrong, in a very small uh, studio, my studio, and uh, it was very interesting. It was very very interesting. I loved the work. I love to work uh, with Rui and Zohar and uh, Saf and uh, uh, all the experience was very, very nice. And for me, it also was like Matthias, a different uh, way of working because I come from more, um, I come from a mime world, the corporeal mime, not pantomime, not Marcel Marceau. So it's a very physical theater I come. And I'm not a, a really of a speaking actor. I always, I don't know, I always try to get away from words. And, but not to be uh, just illustrative, you know, not just uh, to do acting as an illustration, but something deep. I don't know if you, some people know what's corporeal mime and what's mime, the difference. 
which is uh, corporeal mind is more abstract, more artistic. And uh, actually, the text was a real text that I said in the movie. It was something that really happened to me, which is funny. So all of a sudden, watching it, it's a. Uh, I didn't. It was difficult for me to watch it, to see my body, to see my stomach, to see my, you know, to see myself. This kind of exposure. I don't. Uh, uh, I'm not very happy about myself. <laughs> But uh, but uh, the work all together, I understand the purpose. And uh, well, still in process, still in process. I still have to watch it over and over. And it's so great to see everybody now. Rui, I haven't seen for a while. Zoa, Saab, and uh, just to watch Matthias. And uh, I hope uh, we'll have, uh, we'll, get more projects to do together, for sure. Matthias, do you have some uh, words to add? Um, <clears throat> I mean, I have the feeling uh, that the last hour scene, our chapter was like really, it was about a, a clash, you know, the other scenes are, um, abstract in that sense that you don't really can't really figure out where okay what's what's the relationship is it the mother is it her father is it an ex-lover you know and here you have a very like a it's a classic it's it's a date you know two people meeting for a date obviously which goes wrong and uh, the tricky thing or what made, makes it like a raw egg, this scene, or walk on thin ice, is that you um, that you do violence to someone who has actually been, um, how do you say, exposed to violence. Not maybe not the exact same because it's not her life, but of course. Uh, it's based on experiences, you know? So, and to put someone into that same position, um, into that same feeling, especially if it's not an actress, you know, where you have this unspoken deal, okay, we pretend, you know? It's, it's of course more real for someone who doesn't do acting for a living. <laughs> So uh, putting someone in that position again, making someone, okay, let's just, let's use this word submissive, who tries to get away from submission um, is a tough thing to do, you know? And I, um, I remember like whenever I saw Roy again, I gave her a lot of Hugs <laughs> was always extremely nice to her because I kind of wanted to make up for it, you know, because I imagine it's not, it's not easy. And I can totally understand that it's, um, that it's demanding even for me and Maurice to, to watch it because we are also exposed. We're not only telling a story about a trans woman. We are uh, also telling, for example, a story about like a cis guy, you know, who's, obviously pretty fearful, <laughs> you know, but um, I think it will always be an adventure re-watching it and a new discovery. And it was because you mentioned the last scene with Roy on that platform, that was really the point. And because it came after our encounter in the movie, that was really the moment where I thought, damn, I'm happy to be, to have been a part of this really, because as you said, yes, it gives you relief, but why? Um, because it's, to me, it's about her independence, her ability, her, her magic, her beauty, her ability to still beam herself up, you know, to wherever she belongs and then come back with new strength. Of course, this all affects her, but on the other hand, it doesn't.
you know she she comes back with new power with new strength with creativity with beauty with an inner glow and it's not in that sense certainly not that classical movie about trans people that the trans person gets tragically killed in the end you know and everyone cries no you know she she stands there with forceful and with energy and with fantasy and with um happiness still even after what what happened to her and i i find this a, a very very good message and that was the point where i was really happy where i said to myself i'm proud of being part of this really thank you i would like to add something that uh, even though we're speaking about this that uh, Ruish is not a professional actress yeah i must say that uh, working with her i felt all the time there was some depth. She's really an artist. And uh, there was no uh, sensation of, uh, you know, uh, posing or something. It was, uh, she has a, 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 a real understanding, a deep understanding. We talked all the time also about the scenes with Zohar and Roy, And it, it felt very professional, actually. Yeah was very professional in a very good level. I mean, not, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm an actor, I'm an actress. I think th this is should be like that, or that should be like that or something. It was really very direct, very, yeah. very natural. Yes, not, not. Of course, there were moments of, sometimes there were moments of disagreement, but uh, naturally it happened because we have our, you know, we have our uh, habits and we have our, also as actors, sometimes actors, we have also uh, sometimes uh, we're closed a little bit in our cages, you know. But uh, I was really happy to work uh, with both of them because I felt it was really a conversation, a dialogue and uh, artistic. So it could be, possible to understand better how to do it yes matthias sorry I just... yeah, no problem uh, yeah i would completely agree especially in that sense that um she instinctively knew that it's about uh, a great it's about transparency simplicity especially when you work with camera and that you shouldn't push or force anything you know when you work with the camera when you shouldn't try to create what's not there. If you're really in the moment with someone else, some way, uh, something will come up. So, and that's what she instinctively knew. But what I, of course, meant was like her personal attachment to what we're telling, you know? In the end, I mean, if we, if we would, would uh, make a movie about myself and my problems, you know, it would be probably the same, you know? But it was a, a very special personal project so that of course made her um, more vulnerable than an actor who is hired for a movie would normally be you know so so uh, i have a question to the producer saf will you join us yes uh, so <laughs> i want to ask you about the budget how was it out to yeah, get yeah. budget for the movie? Uh, so basically, we started with no budget. Uh, and uh, uh, we kind of uh, believed in the project and rolled with it as it, as it go, as it went. Um, and uh, we were, uh, as you saw, running on very low budget and uh, left some uh, uh, mostly the creators took on their own uh, a lot of the defer a lot of the the uh, um, risk of, of the, uh, the small cost that we did have uh, and we also saved the money for post-production towards towards the end and we kept uh, reaching and uh, looking for uh, more and more uh, options to uh, 
to, to get some production funds. And finally, we just, just got it. Uh, we believed enough, we tried enough, and uh, we got uh, um, the Rabinovich Fund cinema project uh, to believe in us and uh, fund us in a post-production uh, fund. Basically, uh, really helps us to complete uh, the film. Of course, we had some, we had uh, um, the, the preliminary uh, start money from uh, Mifalapa. We did have some money, yeah, the, the, we, didn't, uh, we did have some money to, to initiate the project. Um, but um, yeah, we could have made it, uh, we were in, uh, in, in debts if they, were, they weren't uh, them, they weren't this fund. So we really took the, uh, the chance of doing it anyway. And I'm really glad we did it. And towards the end, it was worth it. And we also got, uh, got the moments um, uh, covered. Okay. So um, we are getting close to the end of the conversation. So I want that uh, Rui and Zohar, uh, um, please could you, um, uh, if you have something add to to tell to the people, we are recording it. It's going to be in our YouTube. So if you want something to say to the world uh, regarding the movie and your work, so feel free now. This is your uh, this is your uh, last chance. <laughs> I hope you will have a lot of chance. That's <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, this is the last statement of you in uh, in the conversation, um, and I hope people will watch it in YouTube and uh, and will hear you. So, Victoria, do you have something to add? Maybe Zor can start, and I. Uh... <laughs> Zor. I I will add afterwards. Yeah. Zor, do do you have something that it's important for you? that people will hear? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you to everyone, to all the people that took part of this uh, production. And thank you to the festival and all the other places that would be platforms for this film to be seen. And um, it's important to, to be collaborative and not to just, um, you know, see it as a unison kind of thing. I feel like all I'm, all I'm, all I want to be is grateful. And it's it's not uh, for granted. Uh, this project is very, very, very um, different and, and artistic. And thank you to Abinovich that gave us um, the the fundings. And you know, all 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 artists should. Uh, want is to continue to work and be very kind of uh, open and sincere and uh, work with their artistic integrity and not for the sake of you know views or money or things like that and and for me it's 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 really beautiful so I want to say thank you yeah I um I will set it from another aspect um I said when, when I was a child and uh, I knew in a way that I wanted to be an artist, um, I was sure for many, many years that every artist, every uh, art student, every filmmaker uh, went into this craziness because they want to confront something and confront some truth, confront some, um, uh, some issues um, and through the years, as we know, we are, mo most of us are uh, here are like in, in the art world for many years. You see all kinds of people, all kinds of artists, all kinds of uh, different approaches and uh, you start, you know, to a little bit to lose hope, to think that also when you go into artistic process, you know, um, maybe you need to have some shortcuts, maybe, um, you know, you need to be more commercial, maybe, you know, you don't need to be so personal, you know, I can tell you, if I could tell you how many times people told me in my studio not to be too much, um, <laughs> 
but um, but anyway, for for good and worst, I, this is my only way. And when I met Zohar to know there is another creator and soul in this world that that feels like me and 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 you know wants to be part of it and 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 willing to give himself um without knowing you know just to be uh very um you know just to be in the moment uh it's something as i said is really not for granted and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for Zohar. I'm thankful for Asaf uh, that really also helped us, you know, like with nothing. Um, and, and to meet Matthias, you know, and, and, and Morris and Susanne um, and the other actors. And, you know, just, I think it's, it's, it's in a way, it's, a, it's just such a miracle, you know. Um, to be able to do something like this and also to be so um, authentic in a way, vulnerable and, um, you know, maybe maybe I can say just to be, at least to be there, you know. I, I don't know if it's a good or a bad movie. I don't care. I know that I was there and that's the reason it's also very, very hard for me to watch it because I feel it. I feel that I was there. And uh, it's something that I never watched. You know, I never watched myself painting in the studio. You know, nobody is there with a camera, you know, uh, uh, filming me. So to see now myself in such a, you know, uh, a crucial moment and, 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 and being alive and being uh, so exposed, um, yeah, so I'm I'm grateful that that I had the chance just you know, just to create it you know and to be part of it, and um, yeah, so, so that's I, that's mostly what I am what I'm feeling right now. So yeah. So I just want to thank you for decided to collaborate and uh, create this uh, piece of art that now in it's in our film festival and i'm very honored that, that it's part of till Fest this year so thank you very much uh, for that um, um saturday we had uh, the q a with very different movie called stage mother <laughs> But uh, one of the most uh, important things that I think Jackie Beat said in the in the Q and A, um, she said, um, "All the time collaborate. All the time, as an artist, she's all the time saying yes because she never know with the person that she will collaborate will come something interesting and good." So I think this is something that you said yes to each other and you did a, a beautiful, uh, strong uh, piece of cinematic art. And um, for me, it's working and I'm happy about that. So thank you for doing so. And, um, and I hope we will meet uh, soon physically, Victoria, <laughs> we didn't do it more, more than a year now. So I hope we will do it and um, we will have a chance to meet soon and uh, not only in Facebook. There, there is a nice question in the chat by the oh, way. Yes, so there is there's questions. Maybe Zohar, you want to answer it? Well, where is the question? I don't see a... I will Maybe look. I see it. I see it. Okay, so it's... Uh, uh, maybe we can hear, hear why you choose the, uh, the quote from Viktor Frankl that, uh, you know, at the, the sentence at the beginning of the, of the film. I mean, I know why, but I think Zoe actually is the one who came with the idea. So it will be interesting to hear him also. So this idea that from the lowest and darkest place of pain, one can reach 
spiritual ascent, one can reach release um, when, when you go through, you need darkness in order to shine light. And uh, the, um, the quote is uh, from the book um, that he wrote after the, um, the concentration camp experience that he had. And um, it's, such a, it's such a powerful quote because it's, it's so true in a sense that um, in order to give light, you need to understand what, it is li what it's like to be the light. The sun, in order to give rays of sunshine, needs to burn. It needs to be the actual fire. And it's, it's, it's a metaphor for a lot of things, you know, with, with in terms of kind of like people talk about the biggest spiritual release they had from the lowest, darkest point. And uh, it's also in the Kabbalah, there is um, 50, 50 um, Sharim the Bina, which is the highest spiritual ascent, and the 50 Sharim of Tumah, which is the lowest, they come from each other. And uh, it's, it's a very, it's very interesting uh, concept. And I, I see it as something that is very true. Yeah, I, I, I always give these weird examples, but I, when I was 24, I worked in a hostel for autistic uh, grown-ups. And one of them, he was 22, Michael, and he was very violent and uh, because he was afraid. Uh, but every time that he was about to hurt someone, so he, before of that, he was hurting himself. So he was biting himself and then biting someone else. And I remember that so strongly. Um, this is, by the way, the moment I decided to quit and, uh, and not to be in this hostel anymore because I felt I felt him so much because I understood the logic, the emotional logic that that in, instead of the idea of feeling, you know, the idea of 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 mostly of autistic people when they the reason that they are very violent is because they don't feel themselves. They don't. There is the connection. There is a lot of there is a gap, and they need to feel some pain. So um, before he did it to others, he did it to himself. So in, in the same, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's really a little bit similar to, to this sentence because as a person, as a trans person, as an artist, as a human being, if you want to build yourself, you need to deconstruct yourself. And people keep saying that, but they don't do it. And I know, in at least in my gender journey, the what is really frightening is that you deconstruct what you always knew about yourself, or you were sure that you know about yourself, and then you become almost zero, you become nothing. And then you need to build something new. And let's face it, nobody really wants to be there. And when I saw this sentence, so the idea, it's so simple because, you know, a candle needs to, or, you know, a fire need to bring light. It has to, you know, it, it makes sense in a way. It's so simple. And then I was like, okay, so I have to be there, you know? And um, so this is the way I see it, um, I think, yeah. So with Do this... all... Did we answer you? <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> is there... I don't see anything. He he can't... Can't... Anyone. <laughs> he is watching, <laughs> he's watching you and listen to you. So I just want to thank you for all, <laughs> all of you joining us here. And uh, I hope uh, more people will watch the movie during the festival and uh, it will travel to more uh, queer events and alternative events. And um, and I just wish you all the best in the world, all of you. Thank you, Matthias. Thank, thank you, Marius. Thank you, Zohar, Asaf, and uh, Roy Victoria. Thank you very much for joining us. 
and uh, I hope to see you in uh, soon. Okay, bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Yale, by the way. Thank you bye. for for this opportunity. Uh, for sure, you know. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Thank you.